What sample rate should you use? Why higher sample rates aren't necessarily better? And more. I'm Keith from no label, no producer, no limits.com. Let's dive right in. Let's take a look at sample rates and what sample rate we need to have in order to capture a particular sound. Let's look at this sine wave. It turns out we need one sample in the high part of the wave and one sample in the low part of the wave to accurately capture it. So our sample rate needs to be twice the frequency we need to capture. Now remember, we want to capture sounds from 20 hertz at the low range of human hearing up to 20 kilohertz at the high range of human hearing. So twice 20 is 40. So our sample rate needs to be 40,000 samples per second or higher to capture the sound all the way up to 20 kilohertz. Add a little bit above that 40 kilohertz and you have the standard CD sample rate of 44.1 kilohertz. That's 44,100 samples per second. That should accurately capture sound up to 22,050 hertz. Now, let's look at what happens when we double our sample rate. We add additional sampling points in each of these sine waves. We already knew that the sine wave passed through these points, so the additional sample rate does not give us any additional resolution. This was a difficult thing for me to wrap my mind around. Higher sample rates don't result in any additional resolution at the input stage for sounds in the range of human hearing. In fact, higher sample rates result in less accurate audio capture. Now, why is this? If I understand correctly, there are physical limitations to electronic components in the real world. So, a capacitor, for instance, can't charge and discharge instantaneously. So the faster we ask it to act, the less accurate it's going to be. And the same is true of analog to digital converters. They get less accurate as you go up in sample rates. So shall we record at the lowest sample rate that captures the full range of human hearing? Well, no, because higher sample rates have other advantages. And to understand those advantages, we need to talk about aliasing. What happens if we try to record a frequency that's higher than the Nyquist frequency? Again, we sample at 44,100 samples per second, and we can accurately capture frequencies up to 22,050. But what if we go above 22,050? Well, who cares if we capture them accurately, right? They're above the range of human hearing. We won't hear them anyway. But look what happens. If the wave is oscillating faster than two times our sample rate, we get sample points here, here, and here. Now, look at the waveform the computer will draw from these points. If you'll notice, it's a longer wavelength than the sound we're trying to sample. Now, this is the problem with digitizing audio. It creates these ghost notes that can fold back into the material and mess with the beautiful balance, the mix that we've tried to create. Now, there's some good news and there's some bad news. The good news is that we have a solution for this problem. And the bad news is that the solution itself causes problems. What if we just cut off the frequencies at 20,000 hertz and we didn't allow any signal that was above 20K to pass through? Well, then we wouldn't have these problematic frequencies which get misinterpreted and they wouldn't fold back into the audio and we would be rid of the problem. And that's what we try to do with something called a low pass filter. A low pass filter allows lows to pass through while cutting the highs. But it turns out you can't really make a low pass filter with an infinite cutoff without screwing up the rest of your audio. And they mess with the frequency response a little bit near the roll off point. Now, the steeper the filter, the worse the problems. Let's think about this for a minute. We want to be able to hear up to 20,000 
and we want to cut everything above 20,000 off. Our Nyquist frequency for a 44.1 kilohertz sample rate is 22,050. So we only have between 20,000 and 22,050 in order to get from the regular level down to nothing. This is a very steep low pass filter and therefore it causes us problems. What happens if we change the rate, the sample rate to 48 kilohertz? Well, now the Nyquist frequency for 48 kilohertz is half of that, 24 kilohertz. Now we have the distance between 20,000 and 24,000 in order to create a slope that rolls out the high end. That's less severe, somewhat less severe than 44.1. Now, what if we go to 88.2 kilohertz? Well, the Nyquist frequency for 88.2 is 44.1 kilohertz. So we have from 20 kilohertz to 44.1 kilohertz, and we can put a nice gentle slope on that low pass filter. We have more than an octave of what you might call frequency headroom in order to slope out the high end. And this, my friends, is why higher sample rates sound better than lower sample rates because we can use low pass filters with gentle slopes to cut out those pesky frequencies above the Nyquist point, which get misinterpreted and folded back into the audio. In fact, at these higher sample rates, we can move the roll off point higher, which means distortions that occur near the roll off point will be moved out of the range of human hearing. Now with nonlinear plugins, such as distortion plugins, saturation plugins, some compressors, some limiters, these plugins create additional high frequency harmonics and add them to the sound. That's the point of them. Sometimes they add brightness or crispness and help us to get that good, open, airy sound. However, these frequencies can fold back down into the audible range of human hearing. Running at higher sample rates can make these plugins sound better. And in this way, higher sample rates can be superior. However, as a general rule, I think it's better to use oversampling on the individual plugins that need it. This accomplishes largely the same thing. Okay, we've got a session here at 88.2K sampling rate, and that means our Nyquist frequency is 44.1. What we know is that frequencies above the Nyquist frequency can cause problems by folding back into the audible spectrum, that's aliasing. However, our analog to digital converter has taken care of most of that by filtering it as it comes in. But we can still cause problems. There are plugins such as exciters, saturation, distortion plugins, and pretty much any plugin that emulates an analog piece of gear. They can add what's called upper harmonics, more high frequency content. If that high frequency content goes up above the Nyquist frequency, it can fold back into our signal. I have a tone here recorded at 6K. I'm not going to play it back through your speakers because it'll take your head off, but we can see it on the frequency analyzer. There we go, 6K spike. Now, I also have this saturation plugin called JS Loser, and I've got it cranked up to 100% just so that you can see the effects easily. If I turn it on, and go back to span, you can see what happens. I have an additional spike here at 18 kilohertz. So off, nothing, and on, 18 kilohertz. Now, what is that? Well, that is a third harmonic. Six times three is 18. So that's an additional high frequency tone that's added to the signal. Toucan has a tape recorder plugin, which adds some saturation, and I've got it cranked up again, a ridiculous setting. Just to make it obvious, we'll turn that on, go back to span, and we see, yes, as well as some interesting stuff down here, we have a spike at 18. That's a third order harmonic. It's musically related to the 6K tone. Now we have this exciter with a fat bottom, also from Toucan. Let's see what that does to the signal. And again, I have it ridiculously strong. We had a third and a fifth and a seventh harmonic. So 6K, 18K, 30K, 
and 42K. And keep in mind here, we're still below the Nyquist frequency, so none of these upper harmonics are going to fold back into the signal and give us any kind of problems. All is right with the world, everything is as it should be. Now, let me point out that if we were recording at 44.1K, our Nyquist frequency would be 22 and some change. And this third order harmonic would be near the Nyquist frequency, and these other two harmonics would be above it. And in this case, they might fold back into the audible frequency spectrum and cause us a little bit of trouble. Let's mute that channel and go to a channel with a 24 kilohertz tone on it. Now, this is outside the range of human hearing, but let's see what happens when we add these exciters, tape saturation, and saturation plugins to it. Here we see the tone at 24 kilohertz on Vox and Go Span. As you notice, it's much closer to the Nyquist frequency. If we add upper harmonics, they might cross this line. So what happens if we add the saturation to it? And there we go. We see a tone come in below the fundamental frequency that we created here with the tone generator. And that is a result of sound above the Nyquist frequency folding back into one of these alias kind of ghost tones. What happens with the tape recorder? Same thing to a lesser extent. And what about the exciter with the fat bottom? That one doesn't show any kind of aliasing problems at all. So if we put these three in together, this is what we get. We get this ghost tone, which is occurring here, which we don't really want. Now, you can't run a session at high enough of a sampling rate to take care of the problems generated by all possible harmonics, upper harmonics that might fold back. Fortunately, we can do something called oversampling on an individual plugin basis, which can take care of the problem. Oversampling is like running the individual plugins at higher sample rates. Some plugins have oversampling built in. The DAW that I use, Reaper, can oversample any plugin. So let's take these plugins and oversample them. The exciter doesn't cause any problems in this area, so we'll leave that one alone. But what about the tape recorder? Let's oversample that. In Reaper, you just right click, FX instance oversampling, and I'm going to kick this up to that level. And let's see what happens. I have to stop the transport here. Takes care of it completely. Let's try the saturation. Takes care of it completely. Now I've oversampled these two plugins, left this one alone, and now we are clean again. We don't have any additional noise there in the audible range. So this is how you deal with some aliasing problems by oversampling individual plugins. It also helps to run your session at a higher sample rate because at 88.2, my Nyquist frequency is 44.1. If I were running at 44.1, my Nyquist frequency would be down here. And a lot more of these upper harmonics would cause fold back problems. And by the way, some plugins call oversampling something such as high Q mode. Check your manuals. Now, oversampling is really only necessary on sounds with a lot of high frequency content. And when you add nonlinear plugins such as distortion, saturation, analog emulation, heavy limiting. If there's no content up there in the high range, then even adding some harmonics won't add content high enough to fold back unless you're working at a low sample rate. Now, it's a good idea to try the various oversampling options available to see which one sounds best. And also, I've been referring to aliasing as unwanted noise, but it's possible there's a genre or a song in which aliasing might sound better. So, as always, use your ears. Okay, so we need to sample at twice the rate of any waveform that we want to capture. However, we only want to capture the range of human hearing, and capturing frequencies above that only causes problems. The faster you sample, the less accurate the representation becomes. So what do we do? Every sample rate that we choose 
is a trade-off between these factors. These factors balance out best at about 60 to 70 kilohertz. That's the ideal sample rate. It's still slow enough to sample very accurately, but it's high enough to move problems up the frequency scale out of the range of our hearing and have nice, gentle slopes on our low-pass filters. 88.2 kilohertz as a sampling rate is fairly near this ideal range, and I recommend it for this reason. If your computer can't take running at 88.2, 48 is fine. I would recommend it over 44.1, but even 44.1 is not bad. It's not going to kill your session. Anything over 96 kilohertz is overkill. It just causes additional problems to capture all that additional high frequency content, which we have to get rid of at a later stage. It is possible, however, that some plugins might run better over 96 kilohertz. I would suggest though, oversampling those individual plugins and run at 96 or 88.2, or if your computer can't handle that, run at 48 kilohertz. As a last resort, 44.1 will do you fine. There are a lot more important factors in capturing audio than the sample rate. If you're watching this on social media, there's a link below that leads to an article with more in-depth information on this subject. And if you're watching to this point, you've found some value here, I hope. So like, subscribe, comment, and share. I'm Keith from No Label, No Producer, NoLimits.com. See you soon. Bye-bye.